Are you ready? Oh, yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious. Let's get started. Hey everybody and welcome into the Gaming Hub. This is episode number 111. I'm your host Tyler saying thanks so much for joining us and I'm joined as always by our two co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. How are you? What have you been up to? I'm doing fine. Uh, it's been a really hot week uh, and I've been working pretty much outside or up in the attic so uh, it's been a bit of a hot one so it's nice to come home to where it's nice and cool and play some video games and uh, those video games I've been playing as with uh, with all the talk of uh, all this uh, tournaments coming up, with all the different sports games, I yep. figured I might just get into NHL 18, to get off some of that rust. So I played a little okay. bit of that. And speaking of that, we've also ha- started a realm of Minecraft, and I've wasted. So- well, I don't know about wasted, but I've put so many hours into just digging and just just mindlessly doing stuff. Like that game is. Just so addicting, like so easy to eat up a couple hours. Just what did I do? Nothing, but I have all this dirt in my inventory. And I've cleared out all this space. But yeah, no, it's nice to see all the other people come on and uh, kind of hung out and played with a few of them. And another game I also played when I'm not playing Minecraft was uh, Fallout New Vegas. This is, uh, I played okay. it before, but I never finished it. Um, I got to a point where I just. I'm not sure exactly I went down, but I didn't have many saves or, but wherever I was being saved, I just kept dying repeatedly over. So I kind of started it over and uh, I'm definitely enjoying it. It's kind of like a Fallout 3, but extended. So I'm definitely enjoying that. How are you guys doing? Oh, not too bad. Let's say hi to Steven. How are you? Hi, Steven. (laughs) Hello. I'm doing, I'm doing well. I uh, just got done directing a week long like camp for a, the kids I work with, and that was pretty tiring and, and pretty stressful, especially beginning of the week. And we had some fun little scares uh, throughout the week. Um, one was was lice, so you know I was that was exciting. You know, <laughs> as soon as I heard that word, you know I start scratching my head, and then you know I. <laughs> but yep. it was good because no one had it actually, so it was just it was a false alarm. So that was good. Um, I haven't put, so I didn't have a chance to play too many video games this week until yesterday when I picked up um, Octopath Traveler on the Switch. And actually, I started the prologue because the demo, the prologue demo, was available on the Switch for like a week now or maybe even a little longer. And that progress tra- or carried over, so you okay. can play the, the demo for three hours. I got about an hour in. Um, I started with with Primrose. Uh, who I thought whose story sounded the most interesting to me and and I'm, I'm, I'm about three hours in right now and I'm excited to get going in that because I I love JRPGs and this one goes back to the glory days and and stuff like that so I I, yeah. I recommend it if you if you're a JRPG fan sure. and you have a switch and you you played some um, Warhammer right oh yeah I did have a chance to play uh, Vermintide <clears throat> 2 the other day uh, with someone from our community on Discord, mm-hmm. uh, and and that was that was pretty fun. I'm I'm I want to get into it and maybe play a little more. I mean, it's free with Game Pass, uh, so that's that's pretty awesome that you like Game Pass turning into an amazing service. Yeah, it on is. the Xbox, it it is. Yeah. So uh, a game I played a little bit of this week is uh, Super Mega Baseball Two, and we did that for reasons. Steve, you played some of it too. Uh, we did that for a reason, because later on in this episode, we have an interview with uh, Scott Drader, who's one of the co-founders over at Metalhead, the makers of Super Mega Baseball and Super Mega Baseball 2, so we look forward to bringing that to you here in just a few minutes, but yeah, I played some of that, and I jumped into the Minecraft realm for a little bit, didn't really do much, I just wanted to kind of stop it and see, like, what's everybody doing, you know, and there's some cool stuff going on in there, so. Summit Bridge to Nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Graham's built this giant bridge that goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah, shout that's... out to Blake. He's done. He's done quite a lot. I like yeah. his swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I just find it funny that Tyler knows more about the games I played this week than I do. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> that's how long this week's been for me. Yeah, I've gotten. <laughs> yeah, but, and yeah, ahead, uh, I just remembered as well. I did pick up the uh, the classic NES, so oh, yes. I was playing some original Zelda and. Wow, that game is hard. <laughs> I uh-huh. died many times. I played Super Mario 3, 
and I'm definitely not as good as playing it now as I was when I was a kid because mm-hmm. I didn't even get through World 1, which was very surprising. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to blow through this like nothing, go to World 8, and then, nope, <laughs> I didn't even finish World 1. So, uh, yeah, and I played Double Dragon 2. Like, man, I'm just, with Mega Man 2, I was just going down that nostalgia alley, and it is a lot of fun. But this this whole thing, three lives and then your game over, so foreign. Like it's such a weird thing, man. Those those games were hard, and basically you couldn't pour hundreds of hours into it because, it, for one, it didn't have hundreds of hours. But if you died, yeah. you just start right from the beginning again. Yep, I, I remember that, and you know we're we're kind of spoiled now. Cause, Definitely spoiled. Yep, if you die, you just kind of start at the last checkpoint, you know. But yeah, back then, if you uh, went through those lives, you're back to the beginning. That sucks. And so, <laughs> yeah. so what's your favorite one so far? Uh, you know, I really enjoyed Double Dragon too. And funny, out of all the games, that was the game I got furthest this time than I ever did in my whole childhood. I'm like, mm-hmm. and it was a neat concept too, right? Because you only have the two buttons. But if you're facing a different direction, then kick would be the opposite button as it would be if you're facing the other way. Mm-hmm. So it kind of like it was neat to play these games, just see where they got their ideas and how far they progressed from just having two buttons and like pushing two buttons at once for a combo. Yeah. But yeah, no, I was thoroughly enjoying uh, Double Dragon 2. All right. Fantastic. Well, uh, if you'd like to be part of our Minecraft realm, uh, take, uh, please go join our community. So you can do that by going over to Facebook. And uh, look up the Gaming Hub forums there. You can go to uh, Discord. You can use a link either on Facebook or through our Twitch channel where you can find us at TXH Gaming Hub. On Twitch, there's a link to our Discord there. Uh, Discord's probably the way we communicate the most just because it's really easy. We still do a lot of stuff on Facebook and other things too, but Discord is the one where we can easily hop in and out throughout the day. And we have a pretty good uh, conversation going there most of the time. So, Please join us there. We also have a dedicated channel there for Minecraft if you're coming in to join that. Or if you want to take part in our Madden tournament, which I'm going to talk about here in just a minute, we'll have a dedicated channel for that as well, where you can just discuss the tournament and the upcoming online franchise. So uh, we talked about Facebook, we talked about Twitch and Discord. Um, For all your gaming news for the world of Xbox, head on over to thexboxhub.com and uh, take a look there. They're posting stuff every single day. We are the official podcast of that site, and they also have a sister site, theswitchhub.com, for all the latest in all of your Nintendo Switch news. So finally, uh, if you're listening to us on Dash Radio, welcome. We uh, we thank you for listening, and please join our community. We'd love to have you take part. So we're doing a lot of cool uh, community interaction stuff here in the next few months, and well, the Minecraft thing is just one of them. Another is this Madden tournament, which we'll talk about here real, real quick as we transition into news. In the news. But we're going to be starting the Madden tournament on July 28th. That'll be the, the start date of it, but the registration form is going to go up today. And that'll be primarily on Facebook and Discord. So please uh, head on over join one of those if you haven't yet and you want to play. So here's kind of how it's going to work. Where the primary tournament is going to be on the Xbox One because of EA Access, and it's easy for a lot of people to get their hands on it. That said, if you have PlayStation 4 and you want to play, don't be like, oh, crap, you know, I, I can't do this. Still register if we get eight people, at least eight on the PS4. We'll do a tournament there, too. All right, there will be prizes for the champion of each one. And I know myself and Steve will be playing in the Madden one if one of us happens to win it we'll give the prize to the uh, highest placing member in the community. <clears throat> so, it won't be anything like us playing, or <laughs> Steve playing, trying to not spend any money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I appreciate the fact that you think that I, I could get to the finals, but there is no way that I'm going to make <laughs> it there. I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be knocked out in, in the first two rounds. Yeah, and I, and I, I might right. be too. I haven't played the game <laughs> in a long time. So, anyway, uh, so that's number one. The registration form will be up today, uh, and going, and we'll take registrations up until probably about uh, somewhere between the twenty third and twenty fifth, and then get the bracket put together and get everybody kind of paired up and ready to go to start on the twenty eighth. So uh, that's number one. Number two for the tournament is you gotta be able to take a screenshot and post it when the game's over, 
uh, just to kind of confirm who wins. And if you're able to stream it, we'd love that. That's not a requirement, but if you're able to stream it, we'd really like that and appreciate it. Uh, but here are the big things uh, when you come play. The, the whole idea is to kind of play with other people. Yeah, it's competitive and, and we want to win, but we want to have a good time, help you meet other people in the community, and just strengthen the community in general. So we ask that, you know, you get on mic, please don't be a dick or anything like that. You know, be cool. And that includes how you play the game too. Okay, so what I mean is play in the spirit of football. So don't constantly go for it on fourth down from your own 14-yard line. If that's happening repeatedly, we'll have to look into that and make a decision. And don't run up the score. Don't be that guy or gal. Don't do that, please. Like, if you're up by, what, Steve, what's a good example? You think you're up by, like, two touchdowns with, like, three minutes left? Let's not uh, go bombs away. Or if you're up by yeah. 17 yes. with three minutes left, don't, yeah, more than two scores, don't go, like, bombing away down the sidelines just to run it up. That's not cool. And that's not kind of what we want in our community. So we want you to have fun. We want you to have a good time. We don't, we don't want to make you feel like there's like a million rules you have to follow because that's really not the case. Everything's designed to just kind of have fun, whether you win the thing or you go out in the first round, to be able to just come in and have a good time and, and be able to take part in some of these extra things we're going to be doing. So, Graham, um, are you going to be taking part? Graham is like secretly a Madden Dynamo. <laughs> secretly yeah i figured it's <laughs> unfair for me to play so i should probably just uh vouch out but no sadly i won't be uh, a couple reasons main reason is because i won't be around for the whole tournament no and uh and the other one is i'm i don't play football <laughs> like i tried it just like a little bit just like practicing like throwing the ball and stuff like that but i am nowhere near on the lines of being able to play competitively so <laughs> i will save that for nhl but you'll come in and watch some of the games i'm sure oh know? yes and, if they're on yeah. i will watch because yeah. i do enjoy watching football on tv so it'd okay. be football on tv it'd just be video game football but right. i I'll, I'll watch for sure graham it's called soccer here in america <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh lastly and i forgot to mention this uh the mode we're going to be using is draft champions or more recently retitled uh, mutt champions to play so everybody we, we kind of went and played with it and by we i mean steven and then <laughs> i went in too and while we were in chat and like they've got when you draft now everybody's got like a what 90 overall team yes you, you'll yeah. have a few 99 overall players yep um so everyone's gonna be have really good teams so it's it's gonna take a lot of like a skill to win because everyone's teams will be pretty pretty even yeah that's and, good and, though cause... yeah and that's what we wanted because i've played in tournaments before where it was using ultimate team and that worked out really well for me because my ultimate team was like 95 overall and i was playing against people who were like 74 overall yeah you know and i, I actually went through that entire tournament without giving up a touchdown don't let that convince you that i'm like super awesome at the game i was just <laughs> i played it was in it was during madden 15 and I love Madden 15 Ultimate Team. And I poured a ton, a ton of time into it. And I was like a 95 overall team by the end. So, yeah, I was. it was just a mismatch in every single way. So, but... Yeah. Uh, and you also... Me, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just say, you don't have to worry about, like, the RNG. Because sometimes uh, with the draft mode, like, you don't get the players you want. And you end up with a team that doesn't fit your strengths. But you can redraft it. Um, really, like, easily. You don't have to wait. You don't have to play games to get rid of them. You can just yeah. redraft. I, I redrafted three times yesterday, and I still don't have a team I want. So <laughs> I was just kind of messing around. But, yeah. like, the draft mode is the most fun for me. But uh, So don't worry about that either, because I know that's that's some people's concern. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, we don't want to talk about this forever. Um, we'll, we'll kind of throw a reminder on the show next week, too. But... Uh, registration will be open today as soon as the show is posted so head on over to facebook or discord and sign up and we'll uh get you into the bracket which will and we'll accept as many people want to play so if it's like you know 23 people it'll be a weird looking bracket but it will you'll be in and some people have to play an extra round but it'll be all be luck of the draw well if so, it's 23 people graham is gonna be required to play <laughs> yeah so um <laughs> 
But yeah, we'll, we'll make it work, how, however many there are. So, But for PlayStation, we'll need at least eight. So I, I know we're getting at least eight on the Xbox side. So, all right. Uh, the one news item I want to talk about this week, guys, uh, and we have another topic, but we really want to dig into that next week because of the interview and just kind of we, we still want to keep it from being a forever long type of show. <laughs> and But the, the one thing I want to talk about news-wise, guys, is Nintendo. So Graham will be excited. But Woo! <laughs> Nintendo on their shareholders call or investor call announced that they want to release 20 to 30 indie games per week on the Switch. So first of all, let's keep in mind, like the, the Switch's been out for 16 months. It already has more than 700 games available. To really? Play. Eh? Yeah. So that's a-, that's a lot in 16 months. Yeah. And now you're kind of doubling down and you're saying... 20 to 30. So, Graham, I'm going to go to you first here because you're a Nintendo guy. So, do you think, do you see any negatives in this? Well, the negative that I see is there could be some amazing games that will get released and they will get lost in the shuffle. But I know with, uh, like, social medias and networking and even our community, like, we'll let people know, like, wow, I, I downloaded this game or I tried this game and this game is super fun. It's kind of like this game. If you like this type of game, you should try it. So I, I think this day and age, like we're not going to f- suffer from that as much. But there is a lot of games, and you're definitely not going to be able to play them all. So there will be some diamonds in the rough, and there will definitely probably be some rough games. So I'm, I'm not sure their strategy of why they're like, we want to put out 20 to 30 games a week. Like, at least, that's just indie yeah. titles, right? So, yeah, just indies. Yeah, so I could see just some great games maybe getting lost in the shuffle, and maybe if they're pushing to fulfill a certain number, maybe they'll be just throwing in games that aren't that good. Yeah. But as always, I like to be optimistic, so I'm going to think <laughs> we're going to get 20 to 30 great games to choose from. But I am proud of you, Graham, because you came up with, like, two bad things first. <laughs> so... Baby steps, right? But baby steps. <laughs> Steven, what do you think about it? Uh, I, I I agree with Graham. There's gonna be some games that get lost just be the sheer numbers. I disagree though that um, all of them will get found right away because like Steam releases, you know, a lot of games uh, every week. I don't know what exactly the number is, but I, I I've heard something like like a hundred games a day, and that sounds like a lot, but you know, it's Steam and they were letting anything get released on Steam for a long time. Mm-hmm. And PC Gamer did a like a weekly thing of like five hidden gems on on Steam this week or fi- or like something like that. And that was nice cuz then you could, you know, wade through the stuff and find games you would never have seen because it's just hidden with so many games coming out. So I am worried about that. And I just I, I don't know if this is the best strategy because I like the idea of like you know release games that are good on your on your system not just release numbers you know what i mean like if you're releasing 20 games how many of them are actually going to be good every week probably you know not a lot i mean they might be okay but like good or great you know unless they're talking about porting indie games over that have already been released on like the 360 or the ps3 in which case that can help fill that 20 to 30 number Mm-hmm. But that that's my only worry. Yeah. There are some great indie games right now at like Hollow Knight and uh, West of Loathing. I just picked up a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. They're phenomenal indie games. Um, so I just hope we get more of that and less of like the bad stuff. Yeah, I, so I'm with both you guys on this. I think that there could be games that get lost in the shuffle for sure. Um, but the, the question is like how many of these are going to be ports of older indie games that already exist on Steam and other systems? Well, um, that would kind of be understandable how they can put out that many games, yeah, then, right? Yeah, exactly. So, if that's the case, though, a lot of those games will have some momentum behind them coming in if they're good and they've kind of been known about already. Mm-hmm. So, that will help alleviate some of that, but I think some good stuff still will get lost. Um, I, I've i seen people compare this to Game Pass. It's really nothing like Game Pass because mm-hmm. you know, people like to make the argument that on Game Pass, you have games that get thrown on there and then, you know, nobody ever plays them and all this stuff. Well, the developers actually see it completely oppositely of that. They see it as, yeah, people come and they buy Game Pass to play Fallout 4 
and to play Sea of Thieves and to play State of Decay and the other stuff that's there, right? The big stuff. Mm -hmm. But then they take chances on these other games that they never, ever would have dropped $15 on. So yeah. they take a chance on it, they find out they love it, and they play a ton of it, and then well, guess what? When the sequel comes out or that studio releases another game, there's the name recognition, and they end up having fans that they wouldn't have had. So Yeah, and, it, and it's not even the same argument anyways because no. it's not like you're paying uh, 10 bucks a month to get these 20 to 30 nope. new indie games. You have to buy each of them individually. individually. So I, that's yep. not even a, an argument that has exactly. any coherent... Yeah, I, and I agree, because I, and I just had to throw that out, because I've seen it a couple of times. Not in our community, but just as I've read around on stuff this week. So, yeah, but I don't think, I don't really see how it's going to necessarily be a super bad thing, um, but I, I am absolutely a believer in quality over quantity. So yes. I hope they don't just flood it with, like, games that aren't quite as good, just to say they're there. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I don't want. But, hope, I mean, Nintendo's had a pretty good track record, and they have pretty good standards. So, I would hope that that's not going to be the case. All right? Anything else on that, guys? No, but you're saying that, that my writing stable's Life with Horses, a game set to release on the same day <laughs> as Red Dead 2, is, is not a quality game, Tyler? It's not well, a game you want to play? Um, no, probably not. Uh, I'm sure Graham has not quality. Yet. Graham's probably got it, like, <laughs> pre-ordered, like, four different ways. And like the super extreme edition, right? <laughs> like the, Does it like come the with edition a real that, horse? Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. the edition that comes with a real horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the version that comes with a real horse. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I have no desire for this game. Just because it's Nintendo don't mean I'm gonna buy it, because that means I'd be flat broke because I'd be coming out with two twenty to thirty games minimal per week. And if I had bought every one of them, <laughs> Maybe it'll well, turn out low like the Nintendogs games that were actually, like, really fun yeah, to play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Graham doesn't like horses anyway. That's true. So. That's true. Not so, a fan of horses. <laughs> no. So, all right. So, uh, yeah, that's really the only topic we're going to talk about news-wise because I want to get into this interview, guys. And, uh, you know, this earlier this week, Steve and I had a chance to sit down with Scott Drader, who's co-founder uh, at Metalhead, uh, the maker of um, Super Mega Baseball 1 and 2. And... And we had a great discussion about Super Mega Baseball. Some of the cool stuff in that game. If you've never played it, I highly encourage you to. And But then also about game development in general. And I think that was really fun to kind of hear his thoughts and his insight on what it's like being a game developer, being in that industry, and being an independent game developer. So we're going to turn over to that now, and we'll come back as soon as that is done. Hey everybody, we're thrilled to be joined by Scott Drader, uh, co-founder of Metalhead Software, which is uh, known uh, recently for the Super Mega Baseball series, and again, you know, games I've been a huge, huge fan of since they came out, so Scott, thank you for joining us, really appreciate it. No problem at all, thank you for having me, guys. Awesome, so, you know, we're, we wanted to get a chance to talk to you a little bit about it, because, uh, you know, it, it's cool to see a game like this come out. Um, a, a sports game that has great physics in it, but it's, it's a little bit different take on on the game and, and kind of really accessible for everybody. So, you know, but first, uh, tell us a little bit about you and kind of how you got into game development. Yeah, um, I grew up playing a lot of sports and uh, baseball in particular and ended up um, going to university in, out in Vancouver and got into computer programming. Um, cool and started playing with some friends at school there a lot of like quake 3 arena some of those fun like oh, online yeah. shooters at the time and fell in love with that stuff and i i suppose that that got me kind of hype on, on on doing games as a career at some point um and and i applied to uh, applied to get into games right out of school didn't get the first job i applied for I went off and did some other stuff and like engineering software and like medical device stuff but at, at 27 or 28 i can't remember what it was i decided that it was time to actually have a have a crack at the games industry again and almost moved back to Vancouver to get into the, what was the big games industry there at the time. Sure. But, uh, ended up having a beer with uh, a good friend and, and, and former colleague here. And we decided to have a crack at starting a game studio out on Vancouver Island in Victoria. Awesome. And that was nine years ago. And, and here we are. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Steve, uh, I think you have a question. Yeah, it's like, uh, tell us about Super Mega Baseball 2. You know, what would you want players who have never played the game before to know? Yeah, um, 
hey, if you, if you haven't played a sports game in a while because you kind of miss like a little bit of a simpler uh, experience that you can have a ton of fun with in a short period of time, you should check it out. Uh, it, it's a little bit more inspired by the, uh, the experiences that, that, you know, were available in sports games in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Easier to learn the game. You know, a lot of direct control of what your players are doing and really tight feedback with the input. Uh, you know, really, really sort of steep learning curve uh, that, you know, a game that, go, that goes all the way from pretty damn easy to yeah. really hard <laughs> yep. uh, and everything in between. So, you know, if, if that sounds like the type of game that you'd be interested in, maybe the, the, the modern sports games can be a bit slow or a bit too kind of like TV broadcast style for you. You just want something that's a bit more of a pure video game. That, that's mm -hmm. what this game's about. Awesome. So, you know, let's go back to the first one for a second, because, you know, it's, I'll be honest, like for me, it kind of came out of nowhere. I, I started hearing about this game that everybody's raving about. It ended up winning Game of the Year for Polygon in 2014 for Sports Game of the Year. Yeah. And so, but going back, like what made you originally decide to do a baseball game? Um, we sat down uh, with, with plans to start a company, but but not necessarily with a specific product in mind. We, we started mm -hmm. saving money to do our own thing, um, you know, uh, quite a while before we actually sat down and started to build something. And, mm -hmm. and a few ideas went through it. Like I said, you know, we worked in some different industries and, uh, you know, sports was one thing that, that, that I knew a lot about and video games was something that myself and my co-founder were, were both uh, into as kids and ha had some interest in starting company around. So, but baseball, uh, happened because it was something that um, I, I knew I knew a lot about and felt like there was um, that was something that we could bring something you know like new to the table on um, mm -hmm. and you know when you when you're sitting down to do a new company or uh, I mean, a new video game or a new company in general you, you know you're dealing with a ton of risks and, sure. and one thing was like well let's at least do something on a, on a subject that we know a lot about um, and, and base, baseball was, was, was that thing for me uh, and, it, and you know we were looking at what was out there at the time and and you know I, I just hadn't played a lot of a lot of sports games uh, since uh, in, in my in my you know the, the, the handful of years before we sat down sure. to make something I missed that older simpler pure experience if you know what i mean oh, and, and wanted to and wanted to see that exist uh, again uh, with baseball so so that's what we had a shot at <laughs> honestly mm -hmm. like we we thought that it was going to be we had no idea what was in what was going to be involved in, in in making um a sports <laughs> game i think i think we, we probably you know we were probably aiming for something that was more like a uh like a 2.5 d you know, n n not that okay. like Super Mega Ball One was like a triple A game by any means, but it, it mm. became like a full 3D simulation over time. But that isn't really mm. what we had in mind when we first started making it. We were thinking a little bit more of a simpler game, simpler presentation, simpler graphics, and so on. But it just kept evolving and evolving. And, uh, and th but you know, that, that's sort of how the whole thing came together. That's awesome. And so you're a big baseball fan. I gotta ask, who's your who's your favorite team in Major League Baseball? Yeah, I'm a bit torn because um, you know. Growing up in Canada, obviously, there's a bit of an affinity to the Blue Jays there. Sure. But, but going to school in Vancouver, we used to we used to go down um, to to watch Mariners playoff games a lot in the in the 2000s when they were awesome. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'll never forget those years. That was a ton of fun. We it was when you could buy tickets really easily, like on on like you know as soon as the tickets were, sure. were live, you get them easily because not everybody's into the internet. So right. it was like wicked easy <laughs> and not even that expensive to get tickets to, to, to like playoff games. And we did a ton of that. And so, cool. and the Mariners are looking pretty good this year. So, I was going to you know, say. I, I just jump between the Blue Jays and the Mariners bandwagon depending on which of the two teams is doing better. Okay. So probably, given... probably a couple of years ago, Blue Jays fan. Now you're. Yeah, exactly. We got it. Yeah, cool. And uh, but yeah, the Mariners look great this year. I'm, it's one of the teams I'm pulling for actually because I'm a Twins fan and they're kind of out of it now. But yeah. you might get some of our players in a couple of weeks, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but... that, 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 yes. Hey, like the last the last handful of times I've been down to Safeco with my friends, it's been kind of like more quiet family atmosphere because the team has been out of it. Mm -hmm. I would love to go back down there again uh, this October and and see uh, the, everyone on their feet screaming at the field yeah. and. At every and that, that'd be great. Yeah, there's nothing like that it's for for me yeah. anyway uh, in yeah. sports. So I, I got a chance to go to Game 163, Twins and Tigers, a few years ago, and that was amazing. Like yeah. uh, nothing like it. So awesome. But you mentioned earlier that you know Super Mega Baseball has kind of a difficulty system where the game can be super easy or really difficult. And you know the system is the ego system, so you can set the ego kind of wherever you want to, and it it ramps up the difficulty 
quite a bit. Yep. Uh, pretty pretty quickly sometimes. Like I'll I'll get to one point where I'm like, man, this is this is really easy, and I'll I'll knock it up like ten points, and all of a sudden I'm like, nope, let's bring that back down a little bit. But the great thing is that this makes this game really accessible for everybody. Like there's no threshold of skill to really be able to enjoy it. Yeah. So what what kind of made you came up with that system or come up with that system? Was it something you planned at the very beginning, or did it just kind of evolve and happen? Yeah, it was it was sort of like born out of the observation that you know like like at the time that we started making this thing, there you know sports games had really evolved to become really focused on realism and like broadcast presentation yeah. um and it, they weren't necessarily an inviting experience if you just were, were a casual gamer and wanted to sit down and, and get into something at the same mm-hmm. time we wanted to have that kind of competitive feel as well um so so we did want to design like at the very highest level it's like yeah let's make something that has like a good low difficulty but also like a really competitive high difficulty and mm-hmm. then there was a decision to make a difficulty system that was based on um like a continuous curve so mm-hmm. many games have your like you know like easy medium hard nightmare yep. or whatever and and sometimes you can't find sometimes the gap between those is is is, is can be like a really kind of a point of frustration you know you're mm-hmm. having a ton of fun but you're getting a little bit too good at one level and then you jump to the next level and you want to throw your controller out the window <laughs> uh, so it's trying to so so that's the without observations like let's make a difficulty system that's smooth all the way where nothing changes too much from it's just a continuous ramp uh mm-hmm. in a whole bunch of the different game systems uh so it was something we planned from the beginning it didn't uh, okay. get the name ego until pretty late and there were some funny okay. conversations about naming it. People, were, that's ridiculous. What a stupid name for a difficulty system. But but we went with it, and uh, no, it's been fun. It's like become one of the things that I think uh, people are are you know, it's one of the the best known things about the game, which is cool. Yeah. So are you able to crush it on ninety nine? Yeah, I I did. Um, I I will I will claim that I have beaten a short season in Super Mega Baseball one on 99 it took me several playthroughs of the season after the game shipped mm-hmm. playing my own game uh <laughs> i couldn't beat it when it shipped it took it took like several months of practice to get to get to 99 but um yeah i, I haven't achieved that on two yet but uh that might that's probably just because i've been a little busy this summer but uh, yeah I'll, I'll make sure that that happens soon N- okay. not a lot of people beat one on 99 for sure yeah like, like uh wait, wait, I'm, I'm guessing a really low percentage because you yeah, guys have visibility to that, I'm sure. But we don't. Have, I don't have the exact number, but mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a pretty low number. Okay. Yeah, I think I play on like 35. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? We see a lot. Uh, a lot of people just like hitting dingers, honestly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that is me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know since uh, the first game was so so successful. Like, the sequel seemed inevitable. And sports games have a tendency of just kind of, like, updating the rosters. So what were some of the difficulties or the goals you had going into the sequel? Yeah, with um, with two... One, one easy thing was uh, that, that we wanted to change the... We wanted to improve the presentation and, and give mm-hmm. the graphics a major facelift. Like, we did see... Like, you know, I mentioned earlier that the game kind of evolved from sort of being the plan and being a simpler game, and then it ultimately became like a full 3D simulation and actually a pretty accurate take on the physics of the sport and whatnot. But by the time that first game shipped, the the presentation of the game didn't really reflect how serious of a baseball simulator it was and i think we 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 lost uh there were a lot of folks that were kind of you know a a little more in the direction of serious baseball fans that looked at the graphics on the first game and said hey this is this is silly this is for kids only there's no way that this is uh you know serious about baseball Mm -hmm. um and we wanted to address that with the new game. At the same time, like with without you know removing, we, we still wanted to have the kind of fun vibe that that, that that the first one had. So we didn't go to like fully realistic graphics, but we did want to kind of change that and and, and make the game, you know, have the players look like you know human proportions, and so that they mm-hmm. look a bit more athletic when they're jumping for a, or diving for a ball on the field. Uh, so graphics, that was an easy one. Um, and then the, the customizations that we, we customization was another big one. Like we had some customization in the first game, but really wanted to have like the full team customization where you could like 
you know, design your own uniforms and, and do your own logos, logos and stuff. So that was something that we had always wanted from the beginning as well. We just didn't have time to do all of those systems for the, for the first version of the game. And then the last big one would be online play. And that was just, yeah. I mean, right from day one when we sat down to make the game, it's like, well, of course we'd love to have online play, but there's only so much you can do with, with, with uh, a few people, which is what we were when we were getting started. So, sure. uh, yeah, online play, that was, that was kind of, that would have been probably the thing we put the most time into for, for version two. Okay. Awesome. So one of the things, you know, you mentioned that you want it to be a fun experience and, and I have a ton of fun playing it, but one of the fun things about this game is some of the player names. So I'm like, my favorite team is the wide lows. Cause I'm one of those people I like to hit home runs and you know, that's a, that's a pretty good power team. So, but there's, there's players named like Hackliner on the team and a pitcher named Holder Close. Like it's just such creative names that are funny. Like how did that come about? Who gets the credit for that? And yeah, go ahead. Uh, th- there's uh I, I wish I still had the physical piece of paper, but the the first list of names I think were conceived uh, uh, we, on, on a beach, like like uh, myself and my co-founder. We, we, we were on. We were, it was like it was. There was some beers and some wine on a beach involved, <laughs> and we just started scratching ideas. This was like before we had even started working on a baseball game. It was like, hey, if we make a baseball game, like it's not going to be licensed. So so like, what are we going to do to make it fun? And, and it's like, well, we can, ha- we can make some pretty awesome name players. So we started writing ideas down. Um, and then, I mean, that was ages ago and through, you know, over the, over the years, like, and, and with two, it was like, one of the fun things with two was telling the team, hey, okay, well, everybody can chip in some names here. Yeah. So we had like ongoing lists uh, of people. So there, there were like dedicated, you know, 15 minute to half hour to hour long sessions of just trying to come up with like really stupid, funny baseball names. <laughs> and then, you know, if they passed the test, if people still thought they were kind of funny, uh, if, if we liked them after uh, a couple days into the game, they went. So what's uh, your what's your favorite player name in the game? <laughs> um. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I, th- I think Junior Young Junior co- covers, uh, covers <laughs> bases. I, think, I think that one, <laughs> that's, awesome. uh, that's my favorite in terms of like the number of levels of, of stupid that that <laughs> <Yep>. one is. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned some of the, some of the challenges of like, like online play. Um, but as an independent, you know, game developer, uh, what are some other challenges and like that most players probably don't know about yeah um you know it, it, a lot of them would like overlap with that of just of, of being like a startup company mm-hmm. just you know limited limited money and limited resources and I mean, we, we came from, from not even being in the game industry. So sure. we didn't even have connections in the game industry. Mm. Uh, you know, fortunately we've hired some folks that, that have like a lot of game industry knowledge uh, over the years since then. But, um, you know, it was, it was a grind to get everything started. Um, you know, and there's some benefits. I mean, you, you, you're coming in with fresh ideas and, and not being influenced by sort of like what yeah. a, you know, you're not having your decisions mm. or, or your direction audited or influenced by a publisher. You, you just do what you want to do. So th- there's a lot of trade-offs there, but you know, it's just, it's just risky. You know, if you don't, you don't know, um, you got, you got no security blanket and, uh, if things go wrong, uh, you, you know, you're screwed. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's sort of, that's, that's, how, that's how it is. And it, it, I, I love things about it. And at the same time, um, it, it's been hard and it's, I've worked, uh, done, done a little bit more, a few more hours of work than maybe I thought this might have led to over the years. Sure. Well, I, a book I'm kind of working through right now is Blood, Sweat and Pixels. And I love it because it's fascinating to me, some of the stories of like game development. And, you know, they kind of go game by game and talk about like the highs and lows and the peaks and valleys that you experience throughout the development of a game. And I'm sure you've had some of those. Is, is there one you can think of off the top of your head where it was like, oh, no, I can't believe this is happening or like such a high for you? Where everybody's just you know euphoric in the in the studio. Yeah, um, just off the top of my head, like I mean, I, I, there, there were there were times when we were making the first game. Um, you know, like it took us uh, four and a half years from when we sort of like founded the company to like shipping the the first version of Super Mega Baseball. It's not like we mm-hmm. we were doing contract work and work for hire in there, so it's not like. I mean, or we wouldn't have been able to afford to live. Right. <laughs> um, so, so there was a lot going on there. But like, b- 
being two and a half, three years into in, into doing something and, and kind of realizing that, like, this thing is not, like, there's sort of a game here, but it's nowhere near shipping, and it doesn't run, it only runs on PC, it doesn't run on the consoles, which we kind of thought were the, the, the best, you know, place for a sports game to ultimately mm-hmm. land. Uh, so those were some dark days, just saying, like, you know, it's like, look, we, we, we don't have much to show for two and a half three years of work and and uh there's a long road ahead just to ship the damn thing so yeah. th- th- that that kind of strikes me as one and like you know there was a point where we ultimately kind of realized that the engine we were on uh, when well, the engine that our prototype ran on was going to be a heck of a lot of work to get working on consoles and stuff so it's like we got to change the engine the game's running on um and uh yeah that 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 kind of like that two-year road up to finally shipping the first game w- was rough definitely rough just just the sheer the sheer amount of time and and just like utter uncertainty about if 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 um it it was ever gonna do well enough to justify all the time that went into it yeah absolutely and you know i think i think most players just don't really know how much goes into this oh yeah and you know just learning more about it like i i can't say i'm anywhere near an expert on it but learning more about it just makes me so much more appreciative of that final product, you know, as both art and entertainment, you yeah. know, when I know what you and so many other people put into games like this and it's just, yeah. it's really, it's, it's cool to see, but I know that it's a lot of long days, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, it can be, I mean, it, 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 there's a natural tendency to, to want to do more than you have time for sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably the ultimate, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that kills kills a lot of pro- projects as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, for every project that does finally get finished, there's a, there's a dozen more that don't ever see the light of day. So, sure. uh, and, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, we, we're working on a thing for years and years, and, like, you really don't, there's no kind of public element of it until pretty close to the end. You don't really get it out there until you start, until you announce it and, and yeah. show, start showing videos on it and stuff. So, yeah, it's 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 a very uh, interesting line of work for sure. Yeah. Very, it's a very it's a roller coaster with very long highs and lows. I think. Yeah. All right. So you kind of mentioned a couple of them before, but you know, being an independent developer, what are some of the advantages of that that you see? Um, you know, I I just think that like we can, you're not. If you're doing something new and you're a bit smaller, like I mean, you can you can kind of deke in a direction that's that's a little bit different from from what's out there and respond quickly and and just and just do something different. I mean, the maybe the expectations of of, of what you might be looking at if you're a bigger company um, aren't there. So you know, the, there's no kind of like preset. You, 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 your eventual users don't have like anything in mind about what your game's going to be, so there's a little bit yeah. of freedom in that sense. And then there's like the other side of that too, which is just that everyone is is hesitant to buy something they, they they've never heard of before. So there's two sides to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, being independent, it j- just just you know like you really can do something new and genuinely original. Cool. All right, fantastic. So I gotta ask, uh, is there anything on the horizon? that uh that you're kind of looking at working on or are, are we going to see super mega baseball three or is it maybe something else yeah we're we're uh deliberating intensely about exactly that question <laughs> mm-hmm. um right now well we're trying not to deliberate too hard and we're trying to enjoy our summer and and yeah. chill out a bit after a pretty busy spring um but um yeah, I've answered this this question with family and friends a couple of times, even like as recently as this weekend. And it's like, we actually don't know yet. We 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 we're, we kind of decided that we're going to support um, SMB two uh, for the summer here and and put out a bunch more content. And there's a big patch coming um, as well as some some new stuff um, over uh, you know towards the end of uh, this month and and probably the next one too. Uh, and and then then that's when we're going to really sink our teeth into you know what the next thing uh, will be. But we don't we don't know yet. All right. So yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, ahead, real see. quick, I, I I just I hope that patch doesn't fix those videos of like you know a line drive <laughs> shot knocking the pitcher out because that cracks me up every time I see it. <laughs> good. Definitely a feature, not a bug. Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> good. That's awesome. That is. A, hey, that, that, there, there's a fun thing about being an independent developer, right there. You can do mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, the, the first time I played the game, the first game I played, it happened, and I was just dying laughing. Like this is this is awesome, and I was taking clips of it and videos and all that stuff. So, 
yeah, I, I love that that was added and put in there. So fantastic. But where can people get, uh, where can people play it? If they've never played it before, where can they uh, get their hands on it? it? It's it's digital on the Xbox One store and the PlayStation 4 store and uh, on, on PC via Steam right now. Okay. Any, uh, any thoughts of Nintendo Switch? Hate to put you on the spot. Uh, we know that the demand is there for that, and mm-hmm. uh, I'll just say that uh, we have heard all of that demand and considered okay. that substantially. All right. But that's all I can say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. So so lastly, Scott, where can people follow you on social media? Um, well, uh, Super Mega Baseball, search on Twitter or Facebook mm-hmm. is the best place for, uh, for uh, news on the game, and uh, I, I tweet once in a while uh, on my okay. Scott Trader account on Twitter, but not very okay. often. Okay. All right, so I encourage everybody out there in our community, if you haven't played it yet, play Super Mega Baseball 2. It's it's so much fun, and it's just like, you know, it's not that sports sim experience. And sometimes it's really nice to get away from that and uh, just have some kind of innocent fun in a game that still has really good physics and all of that as well. So, Scott, Drader, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, best of luck on whatever you're working on next. I would love to see a Super Mega Baseball 3, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Uh, It's crazy here. Uh, Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thanks again to Scott Drader for joining us. Uh, Steve, that was pretty fun getting to sit down with him and chat about it. Yes, I I quite enjoyed that that interview. So so you played Super Mega Baseball 2 again this week after, you know, um, doing that interview. And I know, so the first time we, you, that you played it, you, like, you didn't hate it, but you didn't love it, right? Yeah, and I, and I realized what the issue was. What's that? So, the game came out right before MLB The Show, if I remember correctly. It did. No, and right after, issue, actually. Was it right after? Yep. Well, oh, the issue was I just wanted to go play MLB The Show. Yep. But I haven't played the show in a while. And so, like, I was like, you know what, I, I want to kind of play a little arcade baseball game. And, okay, and we just had the interview, so I'm like, okay, I'll give it another shot. And, like, for, for the arcade experience, but also, I mean, it has realistic physics, as we as was talked about in the interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's quick. You can quickly get into a game, uh, and, you just, and they go fast. Like, they're faster than a nine-inning game in the show. Oh, for sure. So I played through, like three games the other night in like i don't know about an hour and i was having a blast like hitting monster home runs um Mm -hmm. because they threw a fastball down the middle i i just i think that was what it was it just came out right next to the show so i was like comparing it to it when you can't really compare no there i mean it's the same sport but it's different games yeah it's kind of like comparing nhl threes to nhl you know or something like that yeah yeah or like backyard football to Madden. It's not, you know, it's just not quite the same. But I get it because I was kind of the same way. Even though I liked it, I just kept feeling like, oh, I kind of want to go play the show. But like one one thing in the game you love, you laugh every time it happens, is when the line drive goes and like decimates the pitcher. Yes. And <laughs> in fact, I was playing and the, and the line drive hit him in the stomach and so it didn't knock around. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Two inches. <laughs> but it, it's a game that, yeah, it has that look of like arcade baseball. But the physics in it are pretty good. The controls are pretty good. It's responsive. It's, I mean, it's a good sports game. And the first one did win sports game of the year from Polygon in 2014. So... Man, uh, you know, there was so much hype around that game. I remember when it first came out, and that's what got me to play it when it came to Xbox. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was a, a real fun time getting to sit uh, sit down with Scott and chat with him for about a half hour. So, again, Scott, appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I hope you come back sometime to, to talk about the next thing you're working on, which you wouldn't really tell us yet. So, because I don't think they know. <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. They, they earned their time off. So, um, congrats to them on a great game and all that. So, anyway... Let's move into releases for the week. Now, in and we'll start with Xbox. So, you've got some uh, some stuff to pick from here. Um, nothing real good. We're kind of in that downtime, but you can get Mother Gunship on the seventeenth of July. You can get a uh, an update for um, or DLC for Far Cry Five. You can get the Lost on Mars uh, also on the seventeenth, and you can get the Long Reach. On July 18th, and there's a lot more coming out, but uh, take a look at the upcoming games list on any site to, to see that. So, Steve, what do you got for PlayStation? 
Okay, uh, PlayStation got Far Cry 5, Lost on Mars, um, as well, Mother Gunship as well, and then Sonic Mania Plus on the 17th. Uh, and then PS Plus games, you still have uh, half a month to pick up, Heavy Rain and Absolver. Mm-hmm. Yep. Graham. Okay, for, the for Switch. Nintendo Gra- side Graham's, thing. Well, first of all, Graham, your segment's going to get a lot longer pretty soon. Well, I know, that's what I mean. I'm like, holy moly. <laughs> We're going to have to do like a separate uh, podcast for Switch releases. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true. <laughs> Go ahead. Graham switches it up. Um, so we, you guys uh, both mentioned Sonic Mania Plus. Uh, that game will also be available on the Nintendo Switch. That will be July 17th. Also, we have the Moose Man, which will be July 18th. And Guts and Glory, July the 19th. And that is your three for Nintendo. All right. Sounds fun. So, Steve, what do we have for questions from our community? Man, man. All right. So, first question comes from Nick Navarro on CastBox. He asked, uh, how do you feel about scuff controllers? Do you or would you use them? So, I'm really interested in the PS4 one. But, man, I don't know. The the price take attached to it's a lot. And I, they look really cool. I just don't know how much I would use the paddles in the back. Because I got the Xbox Elite controller and I never used them. Except to accidentally order the Star Wars Digital Collection. So, <laughs> but other than that, I never used them really. So, anyway, uh, Graham, how about you? Yeah, I also own the Xbox Elite controller. And I think I put the paddles on once. I don't know what game I was playing. But I didn't like use it or incorporate it. So, I just took it off, put it in the case. And, yeah, and the price is definitely a big turnoff. I don't see me picking up this controller um i don't play any games competitively enough that would require the paddles to make things quicker so i i would don't see me getting this one no yeah basically the same answer the price uh kind of turns me off and i don't play competitive but i understand why people like them oh yes all right next question from rumham asks uh, what is your favorite video game soundtrack halo next (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it stole, is for me it's you stole halo. my answer because i i'm the same way it's halo. Yeah. uh mine would be fallout 3 i love the music in that the, oh it, that's they're true so, they're so catchy they're so yeah awesome. they are the songs are very good i had uh it's all over but the crying stuck in my head yesterday yeah <laughs> and uh, i'm pretty oh. sure i forget her name we'll, we'll just move on billy holiday <laughs> yeah I, I think i uh picked up billy holiday cd from one of her songs being in Fallout 3. All right. All right, next question from Riley C or Riley Clark um, on Discord asks, with the release of Mario Tennis, what other Mario sports games would you like to see on the Switch? Um, I, for me, I'll say golf. I think that would be fun. Um, but I'd also like to see a return to Wii Sports. That's not a Mario game. Next, uh, t- Graham. <laughs> um, well... I'm not big into golf uh, games, but I would say Mario Golf would be a game that uh, I, I think we will see that game as well. I would like to see Mario SSX um, because on the GameCube they had okay. an SSX game with Mario in it or Mario characters in it, and it was really fun. And so I'd like to see that. Oh, I, I, oh my, I was saying a racing game, but that would be Mario Kart. So I was saying like Diddy Kong, but that's not Mario. Okay. Bad Bram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Nick Peterson from Facebook asked, uh, what gaming convention other than E3 would you want to go to? So I, I know why Nick asked this question, because he was a huge fan of Guardian Con. And I just want to shout out to them. Like, they did an awesome job uh, raising yes. money for St. Jude's over seven days, having streamers on, doing four-hour blocks, raising money. They, they made enough money to run St. Jude's Children's Hospital for a day. Like, just to pay for all the costs, which was $2.7 million. And that yeah, that's insane. amazing. And you said, yeah, not just them, but the turnout of the, like, big-time streamers that showed up. Like, Ninja came to kind of bring it home in the final four-hour block. And he got him over the hump. And and, and shout-out to gamers, too. I mean, you guys are awesome. Like, to for, you know, donating stuff, whether you donate, like, a dollar. One guy anonymously donated $100,000. That's insane. And it just shows that gaming does a lot of good stuff. So Yeah. There's been a lot of lot of donations raised this month because you had SGG mm-hmm. SDGQ at the beginning of the month that yep. raised about two and a half million too. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. 
Um, as far as the um, question goes, though, um, for me, it would be Gamescom. Um, other other than E3, it would be Gamescom. Um, one, it's in Europe, which is awesome. And it's, you know, arguably the biggest gaming convention of the year in terms of, like, people. Not uh, not actual, like, importance. I guess E3 takes the, the prize there, but Gamescom would be awesome. Yeah, mine would be PSX because it's in my neighborhood and I wanted to go last year. I even had tickets, but I injured my back. And I had finals week, so it was like a combination, and I just ended up yeah. not being able to go. <laughs> and that one sucked because it was it's like 10 minutes away, and I couldn't make it. Yeah, and Steve was like brand new to the show at that point. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, go get interviews. And he's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that reaction was like, too. <laughs> so, Graham, so how Graham, about you? Um, I would say I would like to join you in Europe as well, Tyler, at Gamescom. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, go to cool. Europe and see how the gaming is industries over in Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, that that'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, next question from Gus McDonough asks, "What were your favorite games as kids?" Boy, um, good question. I like when I think about playing games as as like a kid. I always first usually think about um, Punch Out. I had so many great uh, memories of that game. Going to beat it, but also like the Mario games. Had a good time with those, and then NHL '94 stands out always for me. So, how about you guys? Mine would be Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup, uh, Luigi's Mansion, and Pokemon Ruby Sapphire and Fire Red and Leaf Green. I think I owned all four of them at some point, but the Pokemon games and then the two on the GameCube, like those were because they were just easy enough for me to like succeed at but also you know i put a lot of hours into them mm-hmm. so that was okay. mine yeah now if i had go in order of systems for a little bit here i would say mario 3 on the nes super nintendo would have been super mario world uh mortal kombat mortal kombat 1 2 and 3 i think was on the super nintendo and super mario world those those were my games and nhl 94 definitely all right what else we got Sweet. a couple more Sure. Um, let's see here. I just saw it. I just lost it. <laughs> All right. Raz asked, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Oh, good one. Oh, Man. I know that one. Okay, Graham, go ahead. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yep, the cartoon. I'm going I'm to go with Graham on that. Love those shows. Yep. So I have two. Uh, my early, when I was a little kid, it was Rocket Power, and then – towards the later years um it was uh avatar the last airbender okay all right next question um if if you had the money let me i gotta find where i just saw it okay sorry i'm getting (laughs) all kerfuffled here sandman asked if you had enough money to pull off any cosplay perfectly who would you go as oh boy um wow that's an awesome question that's a really good question so, boy, who would it be? I, I, I go can ahead. go first. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a tie, it's a three way tie between Sora from Kingdom Hearts, Master Chief from Halo, obviously, and mm-hmm. Darth Maul from Star Wars. Yeah, Darth. They Maul. They would all look really sweet. How about Jar Jar Binks? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> or no. Pats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. A lot of things Star Wars related, actually, like even a Stormtrooper or Darth Vader or like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Anakin or whatever would be cool. Um, Gaming wise, I'd probably have to go with Master Chief on that. Graham, come on. Well, we know what. Yeah, no, you ass. don't. I would say if I could be the lone wander in a power armor suit or just be in a okay. power armor suit, I guess that would be pretty awesome. That'd be something pretty extensive. Uh, I know you guys figured I was going to say Link, but you really don't mm. need a lot of money to be able to pull off that character. So I was thinking something where, okay, if I could have all the money, like no matter whatever to be any character, I would definitely mm. spend the money for that one for okay. sure. Yeah. With so, real guns. But speaking <laughs> With of, real, real, real laser rifle. So I'm going to give Graham a chance to save face because he got called out on Discord. He did. You wouldn't go as Fallout Boy, Graham? <laughs> so he... Vault boy, yes. I said Vault boy. Vault. I loved it because they actually Come started on. posting pictures of the band Fallout Boy. 
<laughs> the, I, it's kind of a compare. Well, not a comparison, but a merging. The game is called Fallout, and his name is Vault Boy. So mm-hmm. went Fallout Boy. I was put on the spot. I was clearly I wasn't thinking clearly. So uh, well, yes, don't, my bad. Don't... I'm not perfect. I made a mistake. No, it's funny. Don't feel too bad though, Graham, because they also called me out for having a dusty Xbox One. Yeah. Yesterday, while we were posting pictures of our setup, so we'd like to say thank you to our community for you know keeping us on our toes. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. thank you for all the interaction. You guys have been great. Um, yes. Yeah, it's been it's, amazing. I go into Discord now and like I have to scroll for a while just to get like caught up on everything. So thank you guys for that. Uh, you've been great, and if you want to be part of the community. We encourage you to do that. Head on over to Facebook, uh, the Gaming Hub forums there. Go to Twitch, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. And when you're on Twitch or Facebook, you'll see a link to our Discord. And please join that. And uh, if you like the show and you like taking part in these tournaments and community events that we're going to be having over the next few months and you want to help support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. So on Twitch, uh, you can sub to the channel. We really appreciate that. If you have Amazon Prime, by the way, Prime Days is coming week. But if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free sub to use every single month. So once you use it and it expires, it doesn't re-up automatically. So if you choose to support us again, please do that. If not, use it on somebody. Just help support somebody out there that's making good content and uh, help them grow. So the other way is we have a Patreon page. So you can go over to patreon.com slash gaming hub and uh, take part there. There are level, there's a level for $2.00. Um, up to 15 so we have two five ten and 15 if you go in at the five dollar level we need just one more person to do it at five dollars to trigger a monthly giveaway of a 60 dollar game so the next person that does that will unlock that for patrons in the five dollar and up levels if you go 10 and up you get multiple entries into that giveaway once it goes live and you get a t-shirt and or uh, a mug as well that will ship to your house starting in August if you signed up in June. So with that, anything else, guys, before we roll on out of here? Nope, that is it. I'm excited to see you guys for the Madden tournament here in the coming yeah. weeks. I'm excited Can't to see the people that. signing up. So that'll be fun. And uh, I did put down on the sign-up sheet, everybody, for time zone because I'd like, if, especially if we get a bunch of people, to sort of bracket it off time zone-wise so it's a little easier to get the games in at first. Um, but, uh, so that's why that question's there if you're wondering. Anyway, that's going to do it, everybody, for episode number 111. Thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week with episode 112. But until then, have a great week, everybody. Uh, play some great games. Take part in our community, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. We'll see you online. Bye.